It has finally happened. I've finally made it. I am standing in Astoria, Oregon. This is a place I have always wanted to come and it has such a fascinating history. It's the Jamestown of the West, the first American settlement west of the Rockies, originally established in 1811 and named for John Jacob Astor, whose Pacific Fur Company established Fort Astoria right here on April 12th of that year. Half of the settling party he sent made their way around the tip of South America by ship to get here. The other half made their way overland and basically the first most insane epic Oregon trail journey. It's a story I have always been fascinated by. Truly some epic history here in town. But today I don't care about any of that. Because today I am here for that other thing Astoria, Oregon is most famous for. Being the filming location of one of my favorite movies of all time. You guessed it. I'm talking about the Goonies. Right behind me up on that hill is Mikey's house from the Goonies. You can get a pretty good look at it from the neighborhood underneath, but the house is of course private. And in the last five or six years has had kind of an up and down history with fans. Sometimes putting tarps over the house. Lots of times there'll be crazy signs in the driveway. No Goonies, not now, not ever. But seeing it from down here from the bottom of the hill and Seeing it with the drone is good enough for me. You know, at least for the moment, because I have always wanted to be here. Awesome. Dude, I don't really blame the homeowner because apparently they have a Goonies festival in town and hordes of fans were descending on the house and causing all kinds of different problems. So, you know, it sort of is what it is, but look at the house. You can still see the Goonies porch right there. Data's house is just across the way where he ziplined through the screen door where Chunk did the truffle shuffle. Thank you, nerd pins. It is totally epic. Every once in a while, a fan will get lucky and wander up there and be allowed to take a selfie or two. I'm going to respect the homeowner for the moment, although I might try my luck before leaving town, you know? For the moment, for me, it's good enough. Plus, there are plenty of other locations in town from the film. As a matter of fact, probably the best place to start is where the film actually opens. The old county jail. This is where Joe Pantoliano, as Francis for Kelly is pouring gasoline around the front of the jail. And we get our first look at Ann Ramsey as Mama for Telly. It was the actual old county jail and is now the Oregon Film Museum. Dude, I am freaking out right now. It was definitely a different color in the movie, but the Fratellis were right here. It's crazy because they never really show this giant building next door, which I'm guessing is the courthouse. You know, since it's right next door to the jail. But this is where it is. Joe Pantoliano puts the gasoline all over the ground, lights it on fire with the gun to help Robert Davi make an escape. I mean, I know there's no reason it shouldn't, but it's unbelievable to me the way it all lines up and matches my memory perfectly. It's crazy. There are a lot of filming locations you get to and then you're like, is this it? And it takes you a minute. This is not one of those. Dude, how awesome is it that they turn that into the Oregon Film Museum? And then right across the street is another important museum, the Flavel House Museum. But we'll get to that in just a second. First, there's limited capacity because of the pandemic, but we're gonna try to go inside the county jail from the Goonies. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Oh, no way, dude. Look at this. How sick is this Mikey? Steph, Mouth, Data, Brand. Oh, Andy. And good old Captain Chump. Oh my gosh, this is better than I ever thought it would be. Dude, the movie starts right here as the officer makes his way in to the cell block. Then the camera pans into the cell and up from the feet of Robert Davi, Jake Fratelli, who has apparently hung himself until the officer notices the note. You schmuck, do you really think I'd be stupid enough to kill myself? Dude, he's got the crazy pipe thing that he was hanging himself from so he wasn't actually hanging. It looks 
exactly the same in here. This is amazing. You can actually get inside of Jake Fratelli's cell. And the cool part is inside of the other cells are a collection of actual movie props, carefully crafted replicas, and movie memorabilia. Dude, look at all this goony stuff. Who knew there was that much sick merch available? I'm tripping out on this data costume, dude. That is awesome. Freaking Key Kwan is so funny in that movie. And in Temple of Doom. Dude, Goonies and Temple of Doom. That kid had one heck of a career. Oh, dude, the other side of the cell block is available for entry as well. So now we are behind Jake Fratelli's cell over here. And dude, look it. Hey, you guys. It's good old Sloth Fratelli. And wait a minute. What the heck is this? It's One-Eyed Willy! Oh my gosh, we didn't even need a treasure map! Look! He's right here! It's One-Eyed Willy! Oh my gosh, look, it's Mikey's inhaler and so much of the rich stuff! Look, they even have the marbles! Just watch out for booty traps! You mean booby traps? That's what I said, booty traps! This is not gonna be one of those videos where I do a shot for shot blending in and out thing for every spot in the whole film because of course we can't go to Mikey's house anyway. And this was all just so spur of the moment coming to Astoria in the first place. The only reason I've never been here before and I haven't done this already is because I never wanted to do it unless it was going to be perfect. But with the way 2020 has been going, this is just not the time to turn down any good opportunity. This is the weirdest fun pick opportunity ever but I don't hate it. Dude, you schmucks! You think I'd actually do that to myself? This is awesome. Side note though, when this was an actual jail, it would have sucked to have been locked up in this cell with three other dudes. It's a little too close for comfort in here. Oh dude, speaking of fun pics, stand right there. It's your booking photo, Allie. You have to, you have to hold the little, the sheriff's sign. There you go. I gotta put it around my neck. There you go, there's your mug shot right there. Oh, there she is. Breaking the law. What a fun one. She's such a smooth criminal. I was framed. Look at this. You can write little messages here for the Goonies. Dude, I could have stayed in that Goonies side of the jail for a long time. But there are other things to see in here as well. The other side of the cell block has this whole crazy area with three quote unquote hot sets. Different spaces where you can create a little movie of your own. Something I'm somewhat familiar with, but dude, look at this. In the back! This is one of five actual screen-used statues of David from the movie The Goonies. Apparently this is the one used before it's knocked off the table. Careful not to knock this one over. That's my mom's favorite piece! There are props from the movie Restless, from Kindergarten Cop. There's some of Jesse's stuff from the movie Free Willy, including his harmonica. These, I believe, are some replica Goonies props. Look at that, you got Chester Copperpot's license. His Lou Gehrig baseball card. Ooh, and the friggin' key, dude. That is awesome. Apparently, this is one of the actual mailboxes seen in the movie The Goonies, signed by Jeff Cohen, Chunk in there, I can't see who else. Oh man, quite a, quite a few props wedged into here. Yeah, that right there is pretty weird. Look at this, this is Allie's dream. She wants to learn to be a camera operator on a movie. But you're so small and those cameras are so heavy. Not this one though, it's mounted to the dolly track on the ceiling. Oh, look at this, they got a picture car set in here. Look at, this is how they do it, Allie. You hop in the car in front of a green screen, the camera is already pre-mounted. There you go. Now you pretend to drive. Yep. Keep moving the steering wheel. Look casual. And then, in theory, you just use that green screen background, you replace it with a real background, and you're driving. Of course, now we have these things called GoPros, so we don't really need to do that as often. But still, that is pretty sweet. Okay, look at this one. There's sort of a mock The Shining setup here with a little face coming through the door. Looks, uh quite a bit different than the way the actual shining scene played out, you know, with the axe hole. Funny enough, we just stayed in the Timberline Lodge the other day where they filmed part of The Shining, another little piece of Oregon's cinema history. Dude, here's another favorite movie of mine as well. I mean, number three wasn't the best of the three. It was probably the third best of the original three Ninja Turtles movies, 
but I was so gone with the turtles that in 92, even though everybody else is like, oh man, I was like, nah, still awesome. I have to admit, there's some of these movies that I have not seen, but that's okay. I think I have time. All right, it's time for us to leave the jail, just like Jake Fratelli, because after he gets out of here, of course, there's the crazy chase scene where we get introduced to all of the various Goonies. Just real quick before we leave though, they do have a gift shop with a ton of sick Goonies merch, but my favorite is Sloth's recommendation. Baby! Rouge? Sweet! Man, that was totally worth it. I got some sick merch, which I'll show you guys in just a little bit as well. And before we go look at some of those car chase scenes that match up, I forgot about the Flavel house right here. This historic home was built exactly 100 years before the filming of the movie The Goonies for a world-traveling Captain George Flavel. And it is now a museum. And in the movie The Goonies, it was a museum as well. This was the museum Mikey's dad worked in. It was the Astoria historical museum. After the boys tie up Brand with his own exercise equipment and take their bikes down the hill, you see Mikey's dad taking down the flag at this flagpole right here. And then the boys cruise down the street behind me, which was filmed from over on that corner. But dude, while I'm standing here, look at how gorgeous that house is and it's huge it looks way bigger in person man that is crazy mr walsh was standing right there taking down the flag waving to mikey and it all matches up perfectly to the way it looks today you can see this little pipe in the foreground is still there kind of cool that they haven't replaced that that bolt is visible on the flagpole i mean it blends into each other perfectly and then from across the street oh wow man we're living the goonies right now this is incredible can't match it up perfectly because the camera's in motion probably on a crane. I'm dealing with a slightly lower budget here than Richard Donner or uh, Steven Spielberg we're dealing with. Also the sun is right in our eyes but it starts high like that and then of course it cuts into that Mikey's dad lowering the flag shot. And then you see the Goonies coming by on their bikes right through this intersection in front of the museum. Looks like the little fake Astoria historical museum sign was in a slightly different spot than the real house museum yeah. sign. But the cool thing is comparing the real house to how it looked in the movie, the lampposts are still in the same spot, the same telephone poles in the same places. Minus, of course, these two close ones, which were not in the movie. Sometimes they do remove poles for movies, or sometimes they're just a different angle I can't reach because they had a crane or whatever. But otherwise, this is insane. All right, anyway, on to our next spot. There's the whole car chase, and we get introduced to several of the Goonies. So the first Goonie we see in the car chase is actually Andy, you know, Carrie Green. Andy, you Goonie! She's apparently at cheer practice in a field that was right here. You can see the tree line kind of looks similar. But that field has now been replaced by the Columbia Memorial Hospital. So the hills in the background are the same. We see the boom box and the hills in the background are the same here where we see the cheer practice and the police chase went right along this road. Kind of a bummer that the field isn't here anymore for us to match it up perfectly, but standing here is good enough. I'm sorry, yes, I'm gonna have to keep making that joke and we've been listening to that song in the car as we drive through town as well. I think there's a law. I think you have to do that here. Anyway, the next character we see is none other than Rosalita. You know, the lady Mrs. Walsh is hiring to help with some of the packing. She gets stuck in the crosswalk right here, right on 37th Street, right at the bottom of the hill below the Walsh house, actually. It's actually the same little lot we were parked in when we started this adventure, and I kept looking at that and thinking, why does that look so familiar? It's because that is the Rosalita crosswalk right there. She's standing there, zoom, off go the fratelli, zoom, there go the police, hi -ya! She's gotta run across the crosswalk. Dude, Rosalita's so funny in that movie. I don't think she's with us anymore, that actress. Lupe Ontiveros, I believe, was her name. But look at the way this shot lines up. That is... Wild. I mean, the building looks pretty much exactly the same. The houses are different colors, the building's a different color, but otherwise, man, this is the same thing. It was a very short list of favorite movies for me in the 80s. Batman 89, The Ninja Turtles, The Karate Kid, and of course, for adventures with an ensemble cast, The Goonies. It's one of those movies that means so, so much to 80s kids who saw it in the theater and those 80s and 90s kids like me that saw it on a blockbuster night. And it really hasn't aged. I mean, kids now are watching that movie and loving it. It's like our generation's Wizard of Oz, a magical adventure. It's crazy to think that Steven Spielberg was here up on that hill, that Rosalita was right here in this crosswalk. Awesome. Anyway, next, the police chase goes right past Mouth's house, who is played by none other than Corey Feldman. This is Mouth's house right here. It was only in the movie for like a split second, just a flash. And then of course there's a shot from inside the house down this street we're on. And the street looks 
pretty much just the same. And then, weirdly, after they pass Mouth's house, they're right back here by the deli again, only now they're behind us towards the ocean. On the East Mooring Basin Dock Walk thingy, whatever you want to call it, which is now sadly closed to both car and foot traffic. But that is where we first see Martha Plimpton as Steph, right over there on that thing. Guess it's a little too rickety for us to walk on, but that's okay. You want to know why? It's good enough. That's right. And then last but not least, we are introduced to Chunk right here at the Lower Columbia Bowl, which was and is still an active bowling alley. And way back here on this far corner is the very same window through which Chunk sees the Fratelli's car turn this corner with the police in hot pursuit. He leaves his video game, rushes up to the window, and of course smashes his pizza up against it and squirts what looks like strawberry shake all over himself. And then he says a swear, which by the way makes me laugh every time I see the movie. Dude, this window right here, kind of strange because I don't know if they raised the floor in there or what. Doesn't match perfectly. But this window is actually right down the street from the jail and the Flavel house that you noticed earlier in the film. Actually, I'm kind of curious if we can go inside. Let's see if it's open. Oh, yeah. Weird, it looks so retro in here. Oh, and look, here it is. This is it. This is where Chunk was looking out the window. Oh, check it out, they have the screenshots right here. A little clipping of Jeff Cohen, AKA Chunk. And as you can see, people from all over the world have come to stand in this very window. Yeah, this is amazing. I don't know if he was up here or the floor was lower. No, no, actually, the more I look at it, the more it looks like he was leaned up against this little white thing here. So basically, bam, that's it. You're looking at what Chunk was looking at. Oh, that's so weird, yeah. So it was right here. Oh, I can see handprints. People have definitely been here doing the chunk. Look at back here behind the counter. They have Chunk's Bowling Alley on a t-shirt right there. And over here, right next to Chunk's window, they still have video games, but of a more adult variety. The video lottery. Ooh, Flush Frenzy, dude. That is so friggin' crazy. It was probably actually this window, maybe, that they shot the scene from. And if so, that means Chunk's video game machine was probably in the same spot as Flush Frenzy. Maybe they just say it's the other one because they don't want miners here in this section. And you can't blame them because miners are always stealing the gold. Get it? Oh my gosh, this place is beautiful. Okay, hang on a minute, guys. Allie has got an idea. Yep, there you are. She's gone full chunk. All she needs is some pizza smeared there and a strawberry shake. Which, trust me, is a combination she really would order. All right, gang, this hurts. This hurts bad, because I wanted to go back and try to see if I could get up to Mikey's house, at least for a cell phone fun pick. It's been on my bucket list for, I mean, many, many years. But we've just reached that point in the day where the sun is gonna go down in a couple hours. And as we all know, after the Goody's tie-up brand and get away on their bikes, they head towards the Fratelli's hideout in that restaurant where they meet Sloth, get into the caves, go on an epic adventure. And unfortunately, that beach is like 23 miles away and it's gonna take more than an hour of driving. So I guess I've got to say farewell to the goondocks for now. But at least it does give me an excuse to return to Astoria later. And if any of you manage to get up there, please talk to that person for me. Help me, I need an in. I just need one hour, 30 minutes on the porch. Come on, I won't even ask to go up to the attic. Okay, with what is hopefully just enough sunlight left, we have made it to Ecola State Park, the site of the old lighthouse, the Fratelli's hideout, abandoned restaurant, and the entrance to One-Eyed Willie's Caves. This is one of those spots that you get to that's completely disorienting. You're not sure exactly where you're supposed to be standing and looking. For the first like 20 minutes that we've been here, I've been so confused. A lot of people online have said that little structure to the right, that little picnic structure, was built where the Fratelli's hideout was. But they're wrong. That looks completely wrong. So am I supposed to be looking there? Am I supposed to be looking there? Luckily, I bought a little clue at the gift shop that should help me out. This is 100,000% the correct spot from the Goonies. There's even an official sign to that effect. There's just 
two problems out here. One, everyone on the internet is wrong who says that that is where the Fatelli's hideout was, number one. And two, the bushes and trees over on that side of this lawn here have grown up so much that the telltale hills and some of the ocean rocks that give away the exact spots are kind of hidden. But thanks to this map and about 30 minutes of looking around, I believe I have now cracked the code. There were a lot of scenes here like with Brand driving up and Troy taking him for a little ride and all these different things on some of the roads in this state park that we don't have time to go looking for. But if you come out here to E. Cola State Park and you're looking for Goonies, the first place you gotta head is down there. When the Goonies arrive, the first thing they have to do is haul their bikes up a hill just by this little picnic structure that I'm going to call the False Fratellis. You'll notice this pathway here and then this sort of little shelf-like hill down here. Well, if you back away and lower yourself down enough, you can perfectly line up the shot where the four core Goonies arrive on the scene. Dude, look at this. At first, it doesn't look like it matches. There's so much fog in the movie scene that a lot of those background peaks are completely hidden in the film. Plus, in real life, you'll notice you can see the city of Cannon Beach pretty darn clearly. The fog was definitely helpful for the filmmakers that day. Oh, so beautiful out here at sunset, and it's even more beautiful the way this lines up. Now, I have had this, this little Goonies prop replica doubloon for years, and I have waited for years to come to this spot for that shot of Mikey right here in front of these rocks where he is trying to line up the lighthouse and the rocks in the doubloon that was shot right here. And look at the way it lines up with this Goonie today. Dude, this is insane. I hope I have the map the right side up. Unfortunately, the shot going this way where he's looking through the coin is basically impossible to line up today. Not only is there no giant tree sitting over here anymore, but if you really take a close look at that shot, you'll notice it's a composite shot for sure. The boys aren't actually there. I don't know where those rocks are because these trees have grown so much. However, the Fratelli's hideout was definitely not that little shelter. It was 100% over here and I think this was the tree. Some of the trails have closed. So much has changed out here in terms of growth. But I believe that in the next shot, where the boys start tramping through the grass towards the restaurant, towards the broken lighthouse, there's a huge giant crane shot, which I won't be able to match because I'm not that tall. But you notice how it goes down past this tree? Keep in mind the camera would be much, much higher than I could possibly put it now. But I believe, friends, I am 99% certain that is the same exact tree. Look at that broken off branch at the bottom of the tree in the film. And then notice the topmost broken off branch that you can see on this stump here. It matches perfectly. How does it match? You gotta look above at the broken branch at those little marks, those little nodules on the tree. They are still here, those two little dark marks. I mean, how lucky is that, that those two little marks there above what used to be a little more of a broken branch have survived the otherwise total collapse of the tree. The hill on the far left is also covered up by new trees now, as you can see, as is most of the ocean view. But if you look at the way these shots line up, keep in mind the camera angle is a little different. We can now tell where the Fratelli's restaurant was. Oh boy, the light's getting low. We better hurry. The next shot of the boys coming across the grass by all those piles of wood was filmed up on top of this hill where the parking lot is and where all those people are gathered to get a sick pic of the sunset. Now you remember that false Fratelli's picnic shelter down there? You could actually see that in the movie. And the way to find the correct spot to watch the Goonies walk across the field is to line that picnic shelter up so that it's almost touching the left edge of that hill from up here. It goes by quickly in the movie, but if you have your camera in the right spot, it should line up with a still frame from that scene. When you unpause the movie, the boys are then counting off the hundred paces until they get to the lowest point, which of course ends up being inside of the restaurant built for the movie right over on that little knoll over there. Now you can tell, looking at 1985 or 84 when they filmed versus today, 2020, a lot has changed. So many trees have grown up. You can't really see the hill behind, but that is the area just past the green grass where the Fratelli's abandoned restaurant was and the lighthouse behind it that almost nobody ever notices in the movie. That is in freaking sane. So the next time somebody tells you that that picnic shelter over there was built on the side of the Fratelli's restaurant, no. 
they are wrong. It was right over here. And one of the ways you can tell is look at the ground right here. You see how it's sort of disturbed? There's a little disturbance there, a low area. These were foundations for old concrete picnic benches. You can see the foot of one of them right here. And those obviously couldn't be easily removed for the filming. And thus the weird piles of wood in the movie are actually disguising picnic benches here in E. Cola State Park. It was behind one of those very wood piles that the Goonies crouched down to get a better peek at the restaurant. And I think where they do the reverse shot, right? And you can see kind of the Goonies faces as they're looking towards the restaurant might have been shot behind a wood pile over this one. Because if you stand right here and look off in that direction and you get your camera as close as you can to the film camera's, you know, crop. I mean, that lines up pretty darn good, my friends. Pretty darn good. And then when you flip around the other way, some of the features are hidden by the sort of growth of the trees. But that reverse shot of the Fratelli's restaurant, I mean, it matches up pretty darn closely with this. And there is a picnic table right where one of the old ones would have been, which matches up pretty closely to where the wood pile is to disguise one in the film as well. Dude, this is nuts. We're running out of light, but using all of those shots, you know, that kind of match up and line up, you can tell the Fratelli's restaurant was built right at the edge of the sort of lawn that exists today, right where this rough grass starts. Looks pretty similar to the way it did in the movie. So when they actually walk towards the restaurant, it'd be right around kind of like this. I know it's getting dark. It's a little backlit with that sort of last dregs of the sunset there. but Dude, this is the spot. And when you come down here, right where the front of the restaurant would have been, it's like perfect. They would have had to build steps anyways to do a level platform. In the background, this way, behind Chunk, especially as the boys make their way around the wraparound porch, you can see sort of the trees that aren't pine trees in the background. You can see there's sort of a drop off to the parking lot area behind him. And those trees, my friends, those non-piney trees are still right back there see that right back there in the tree line and the reason why there's such a distinct drop off from where this grass is and where chunk was standing in the movie is because right there there's an actual drop off with the sort of huge deep fern lined creek back there that i'd show you but it's getting a little too dark and so by the way this also sort of would have been the background when chunk is on the porch and he sees the cooler and he thinks he's gonna get a soda it says another swear that makes me laugh every time and anyway this is it the Fratelli's hideout down in the basement here. They have an it, an it, and it was all distorted, Slav. Hey, you guys! This is awesome. I would love to show you the shots where the girls meet up with them over here, and you can see this bay in the background just from this perfect angle that matches. But like I said, I can't do a shot for shot for shot pointless without Mikey's house anyways. I hope to someday get a chance to go up there for a little while. And I mean, I know tons of other people have done it before, but this is one of my favorite movies of all time. I mean, a real inspiration for me. I gotta be honest with you, I don't think anyone has done it better since, like that type of thing. Stranger Things, season one especially, comes pretty darn close, but we would never have a Stranger Things if it wasn't for those goonies. Now the ending scenes where they're coming out of the caves, onto the beach, getting picked up by their parents, were actually filmed in California on a totally different beach than all this. Then there's the off-road race at the beginning, right? Mama Fratelli and all of them racing off-road at a beach in Oregon that we didn't have time for today. But man, we saw a lot of Goonie stuff. I mean, an unbelievable amount. I got to use my doubloon out here. Allie got to rock some of her Oregon Film Museum sick merch. I'm feeling so positive. I might even do the truffle shuffle. <laughs> yes, dude. We did it. We came. We saw. We Goonied. You goony! And now I gotta drive 16 or 17 hours straight back to Southern California. But you know what, dude? For a spur of the moment thing, we didn't get every spot. I didn't see every single thing I wanted to see. And there's so much up here in Northern Oregon that I I love. The weather is beautiful. The the scenery, the 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 history, the film history. But the Goonies, my friends, have been on my bucket list forever. And for a spur of the moment deal, like I said, I think we did pretty good. Now that the sun is basically completely gone and it's getting dark, everyone else has left this park but us. I think it's about time to say we did it. We've done our duty. We can go home and sleep well.
is weird. Not only is this little park here the site of Fort Astoria, which I believe became Fort George, so the birthplace of Astoria, but it's also apparently the birthplace of Ronald McDonald. Different Ronald than I'm used to, but still. Weird. First teacher of English in Japan. OHV. Bullet holes. Oh my gosh, I think it's the Fratellis. Oh, thank God. They weren't interested in us. Oh my gosh. Doe! A deer! A female deer! Hi! Do you know Ray? He's a drop of golden sun. I mean, now you know me, a name I call myself. But, sorry, I gotta go. Oh, and you gotta go too? She gotta go far. A long, long way to run. So, a needle sewing thread, la, a note to follow, so, tea, a drink with jam and bread, that will bring us back to doe, ho, 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 doe, a deer, a female deer, ray, a drop of golden sun, me, a name, I call myself, jump in anytime. A long, long way to run. Seriously, I cannot get over how quick the shot of Mouth's house is in the movie. It is so quick, you actually have to slow mo it almost to death just to get a glimpse. It's a pretty nice place, though, and check this out. Holly just noticed it's for sale. Oh, I had a problem. It's not playing. Yeah. I might even do the trouble. <laughs>